In this lesson, we're going to take a look at the switch case statement. This is the other decision branching statement in C++ other than the if else. So what is a switch case? It's really prepackaged nested if else. The compiler is taking care of the headache of setting up the nested if else for you, uh, made it a bit easier for you to do decision branching in one of many different directions. So let's take a look at the syntax. It's a bit more complex. So we have switch, control variable, case constant 1, statement 1, break, case constant 2, statement 2, break, dot, 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 case constant n, statement n, break, default, default statement, and that's it. The reserved words, or keywords, are switch, case, break, and default. Statements, of course, statement 1, statement 2, dot, 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 statement n, and default statement are either single simple C++ statements or compound statements. Notice in this case you don't need curly braces. Of course you still need the requisite uh, semicolons, but you don't need curly braces. It does not hurt to put curly braces in there. You could have a curly brace here and a curly brace here, but it's simply not necessary. The compiler knows that control is going to run between that colon and the uh, the next case or the next default. All right, so how does this work? Well, you have different cases. These are the different directions that control can pass. The compiler is going to compare the value of control variable to constant 1, constant 2, constant 3, dot, 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 constant n, looking for a match. Now, what you must realize is the type of the variable control var and the type of constant 1 to constant n must be the same. And what types might they be? Well, it has to be a discrete type, which means it's going to have to either be a bool, integer types, or characters. It won't work for continuous types like doubles and floats, and it won't work for strings. Well, a bool can only take on two values, true or false. If that's the case, you should simply use an if statement. So realistically, we're looking at either character or integer types. So it will compare the value of control variable to constant 1. If it's a match, then it will execute every statement after that until the end of the switch case structure or until a break statement is encountered. The break statement will shift control out of the scope of what it's in. In this case, it's in the scope of a switch case. Now, you must realize that break statements and the default statement are optional. So actually, if you didn't have these breaks, then if the value of control variable matched constant 1, then every statement would be executed after that. It would skip over the cases. It's sometimes the case that you don't uh, want those breaks. So you have kind of a, um, a sieve sort of. Okay, so once again going back, the value of control variable is compared to constant 1. If no match, it compares to constant 2. If no match, it compares to constant 3 until it finds the match. And if it does not find a match, then it will hit the default. And again, the default and default statement is optional. You do not have to have one. Also, these values, constant 1, constant 2, constant n, must be known at compile time. They can be either constants or constant literals. All right, let's take a look at an example here. We have choice being a short, and I have what my arrow is pointing to here is what is known as a menu. Okay, and a menu is nothing more than a prompt. In this silly little example, my menu is of animal sounds. I have option 1 is pig, 2 is dog, 3 is cow, and then I ask your choice. Presents the menu, asks for a choice, and we read in choice as a short integer. Okay, so let's suppose that the user inputs 2. So the value of choice is the integer 2. I'm going to switch on choice, and I'm going to compare then to the different cases. So it's important to realize that this is an integer, this is an integer, this is an integer, just like choice is an integer. Value of choice is 2 is compared to 1, there is no match. It jumps down to case 2. There is a match, 
So it's going to execute every statement until it reaches a break or the end of the switch case statement. In this case, it's going to execute bark, rough, and then it hits the break. Now I included the two statements here to show, though that is a compound statement, I do not need the curly braces here and here. I can put them in, it's, it's okay, but they are not needed. When I hit the break, execution passes out to the end of the switch case statement. Okay, let's take a look at a little bit more complex version of the very same thing. I'm going to create a Boolean variable called quit and initialize it to false, which would indicate that the person does not want to quit. I enter the do loop here, and this is my menu. It's the same menu. We have a heading for animal sounds. We have an option for pig, dog, cow, and quit. This is a new addition, and then a prompt for your choice. Notice choice is declared of type char. Okay? So we read in a choice, and let's suppose that the user inputs C, the character C. Take a look at my switch case. I enter the switch. Choice is a character, and look at my cases. That's a character. That's a character. One can be an integer. It can also be a character. So I compare. Is the value of choice, which is the character C, is that identical to the character 1? No match. P, no match. 2, no match. D, no match. 3, no match. C, a match. I'm going to execute every every statement after that until I hit a break. So I'm going to output moo and I hit the break. Control falls down to the end of the switch, which then hits the end of the do while, and I compare the value of quit. Well, quit was false. It did not change. Not false is true, Okay, which means I'm going to jump back up to the beginning. I'm going to present my menu again, read in what the user inputs. The user inputs 4, enter the switch, compare, no, compare, no, 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 yes. I have a match. What happens here? Well, actually, it'll skip over that next case. It just ignores this. It hits the quit is assigned true. It's the break. Puts me out to the end of the switch case and down here to the condition on the while. Okay, so quit is true. Not true is false. And that puts me out of that uh, do while loop. Okay, do we have to use a switch case for a menu uh, setup? No, we don't. Here's another example where I'm going to read in a student number. So I'm prompting for student number. I read it in. And I'm going to switch on the first digits of the student number. So I'm going to take student number and divide it by 10,000. And that value, which is the student number index, I'm going to check to see. If it's 12, that's the code that handles transfer students, and I do some uh, sort of operations for transfer students. If it's 13, that means it's freshman. 14, then I've got code to handle sophomores. 35, that handles graduate students. Anything else, uh, so I guess there's no uh, juniors or seniors, uh, is an error condition, and I skip out of the switch case. So there's all sorts of things that you can do with a switch case statement, but there's an, anything that you can't do without a nested if else if you really wanted to. And that is a wrap up of the switch case. That's all for now.